to hold body cause I would try to surround myself with no goodbyes. But people make it so hard to do so when I'm feeling down. I stop and take a look at what's around. I dig deep and see what I found. I make the best of whatever I have cause what I have. It ain't much to some, I know, but for me, yeah, it's everything. That's the way to the world, that's the way to the sky, that's the way to the cold, hush wind, the winter has it's blowing on by, that's the way to the sun. After it dries the rain It's the feeling you get when you're walking away And you can't go back again That's the way to the world Sometimes my faith grows strong For some people I've known for so long And other times it gets hard to hold on when you're trying out for so many years There comes a point where we Have different visions that we can't see So whatever will be, will be And maybe one day you'll come around We have to face Yeah, what we put in place Cause after all we may never talk again That's the way to the world That's the way to the sky That's the way to the cold Hush wind and the winter has its blowing on by That's the way to the sun After it dries the rain yeah. It's the feeling you get when you're walking away and can't go back again that's the way to the world oh now i i can't play that memory card game with what you are feeling i lost the card you were dealing oh but i'll try still through all of my strength and will to hold on to keep on holding on That's the way to the world That's the way to the sky That's the way to the cold Hush wind and the winter has it's blowing on by That's the way to the sun After it dries the rain yeah. It's the feeling you get when you're walking away And you can't go back again That's the way to the world That's the way to the sky That's the way to the cold Hush wind in the winter as it's blowing on by That's the way to the sun After it dries the rain yeah. It's the feeling you get when you're walking away And you can't go back again That's the way to the world Route 104, Dylan Holton, Way to the World. That one's uh, doing quite well for him these days. We have uh, Dylan with us here in the studio. How's it going? Not too bad, man. How's it been? Solid. Uh, thanks for coming in to see us. This is a rare trip home for you, It is it? a rare trip home, man. I usually get home once a year, yep. and usually it's at Christmas, so it's... Not looking like this outside. I'm happy. Usually, to... well, global warming, you never know. Oh, I'm it, telling actually, you, man. you know, in Nova Scotia, mm -hmm. it was uh, it was warmer on Christmas Day than it was the first day of summer. No way. Like, it was like 16 degrees on Christmas Day. <laughs> it was just absurd. Hey, and like, it was like 11 on the first day of summer. We like surprises, here, so. don't we? There we go. <laughs> so, uh, where are you from originally? Originally from Nova Scotia? What part of Nova Scotia? Originally from Pictou County, Nova Scotia, um, outside New Glasgow, Stellarton area, a place called White Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, White Hill out there, and it's it's definitely a country. You know, it's it's out in the boondocks kind of thing. People say. 
Right, right. Uh, anybody from around here that uh, you, you played with over the years that we might know? You know what? In Halifax, I, I've made it here. Uh, I try to make it once every time I'm home. And uh, last, I think it was two years ago, I ended up playing with a guy, Tommy Green Jr. I don't yeah. know if you know. He, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know he's in here a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, a guy from New Brunswick, but uh, talent, real talented guy. But he spends a lot of time in Halifax, and I think he yeah. kind of bases himself out of here, too. So. Now, uh, Tommy does a lot of time on the cruise ships, too. Exactly. I think it's kind of what you do. Yeah, too, and it was, it? it was through Tommy that I actually got that opportunity, because when I was touring on the East Coast down North Carolina, Florida area, all up there with my band um legally i couldn't be there anymore be in that country so oh. when, when i was literally leaving the country i was at the airport in la after i toured california and who came up to the gate but tommy and uh, we ended up sitting there and we talked for a while and we just had no clue how we never knew each other we were both about to fly back here and uh he ended up all, you know telling me like hey you should if you're interested play on some cruise ships because he knew i was coming back to canada and i've yeah. been based out of the u.s for a few years but um, that's how that happened. And then for me, it just kind of exploded like him. And yes, yes. I started headlining shows in front of thousands of people every week through the Caribbean, Hawaii, Alaska, Mexican Riviera. And, oh, my God. Oh, it was unreal. Great tour without having to load into a tour bus. You too, know what? Which is nice. There's so Stay many. Stay away from the van. Uh, yeah, you know? man. There's so many perks to it. And, uh, you know, people were so appreciative on the ships just to hear, you know, hear all, uh, your own version of different uh, cover songs. Mm. But at the same time, when they really start to get to know you, that's when they start being interested in your original music. So you have thousands of people every week coming through, beautiful people, man, and they just want to hear your original music. And it's it's such a win-win situation. Oh. And you're traveling around the world. Yeah. Yeah. So you great. were in the States before that? Like you were doing, how did you, how'd you end up there? Like, yeah, you... well, I actually went on a baseball scholarship out of high school out to Lethbridge, Alberta. And I played there, uh, played ball there for two years, and then I got recruited down to North Carolina on a baseball scholarship. Oh, my God. Yeah, kind of kind of crazy situation, but uh, baseball used to be my passion, and that's all I used to do. And so that's what brought me to the U.S. And I think when baseball ended, my injuries and everything, um, I was already in Wilmington, North Carolina, a beach town, and, and that's where I started all this reggae-type music, be, be real beachy vibes. And, uh, you know, people were digging it, and I just kept getting busier and busier down there. Started a band, and uh, we just got busy, man. But eventually, citizenship stuff. Citizenship, starts, visa yeah. stuff. You know, it's people talk about it, and people, oh, well, you're just from Canada. It's not a big deal. But, man, when it comes to paperwork, it's, oh, yeah. it's tough. It's <laughs> tough. So, you know, you fall into that situation, too, where you're trying to balance things out. But but luckily, uh, you know, I jumped on the cruise ship for a year, about a year and a half. And then I ended up signing a record deal with a guy named Bill Bell, who was originally from Toronto. He sounds like a, yeah, like he used to play with a bunch of bands, uh, I he think. Man, he? Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Uh, he's really good friends with Tom Cochran, right. and uh, he just produced his last album with Tom. Um, I know they were doing a lot of mixing. Lead guitarist for Tom, lead guitarist uh, for Jason Mraz, mm -hmm. and uh, toured with Jason Mraz for years. He's been his musical director for, gosh, the last 12, It's a good years. resume. Yeah. It's really good, man, and to mix with people like that, it's just, it's overwhelming, man. Like, Bill's been... A pretty big inspiration man and, and when I took my music to him and we went over my songs like just the creative process and studio with this guy it was unbelievable man it was Ooh. unbelievable and, and that's the big leagues too yeah yeah. And, yeah and we actually did record out in LA a place called Sherman Oaks in, in Los Angeles and uh, it was just nice creative just chill vibe and uh, we knocked out the whole album and we released the first two songs obviously and then we're just I signed with a management team now in Beverly Hills mm -hmm. so uh, they're Harris management and uh, they've been good to me you know we released the first two videos and we're just getting the word out there Nice, nice. So, uh, Daisy a Day, that's another one mm -hmm. that's on. I've just got a CD with singles on it right, here. So right. you're kind of working towards a new towards a new album. Yeah, the whole yeah. album's finished up. I'm really happy with it. The first two songs, we wanted to get out there to let people know, like, hey, I'm here, you know? And, yeah. and we're seeing what it can do, and it's been uh, Weight of the World and but Daisy a Day. They've both created a you know, new opportunity and opened a few, few new doors. But I am excited about the rest of the album, too. I uh, Three of the songs are actually produced by Picto County's Dave Gunning. Yeah. And uh, Dave's a real good friend of mine, and, you know, we just love talking about music and different songs, and he really, you know, like like Bill did, he really brought these songs to life, like I was ha hoping, so. Excellent. And Dave's and Dave's featured on one of the tracks as well, so. I think it's the law that Dave Gunning has to be on any track that That's comes out of Vandaganish County, you, you know what? County. I was coming it. home, and I was yeah. working on the album, and I was about to go to L.A. to really do the album, and I was like, you know what, there's three songs on this album that really mean something to me, and uh, to have Dave produce three of them, especially one called Sail Out to Sea, it's all about leaving home and wanting to stay there, but you never do. Right. And uh, Dave's featured on that and produced on that, and he's just a great representation of the East Coast, man. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about Daisy a Day? What uh, the story behind that? You know, yeah, Daisy a Day. Uh, I was influenced that when I was uh, torn through the Caribbean. I was meeting thousands of people every week, and it was kind of always the same story with these people, like, where are you from, how you doing, what's your name? And... And then it would just be left at that, you know, and, and they're great people, but you just really, you're never going to see them again. Yeah. And uh, so I got in this routine six months at a time doing this with people. And I sat down and I was just thinking to myself, you know, what if I let these people into my life? 
um, full fledged and got to know them. And what if they did the same with myself? And could we have a positive impact on each other's lives? And that's where it kind of came from. So it's it's all about the what if. What mm. if you act on that with somebody? But um, it's funny because I wrote the song. It came out that way. And then there was a couple from Toronto who ended up using Daisy a Day for their wedding video that they had. They got married, but there's such a uh, incredible story behind that. Um, he was diagnosed with cancer, and they said he had months to live. So what they did, they rushed his wedding, and then he had his surgery and everything. And uh, you should definitely look these people up. It's all on my social media. But, um, yeah, they ended up having a surgery, and uh, they thought it would project him to stay around longer and stuff. And then they ended up giving him day to day mm. for his surgery. So it didn't go so well, and I pray, to, I pray that they're doing well. And uh, it brought a whole new meaning to this song, man. Like now when I play it, it's it's a whole other set of emotions I'm feeling like for this couple and people wow. in similar situations because it is what a, it's about the what if and and this is a couple that took the risk of you know saying yes to each other and and making something happen with their lives and right. gosh man you know that's just how it works and it's so inf it's inspiring it's inspiring. tremendous cool let's give that one a spin then yeah let's do it man daisy a day from uh, Dylan Holden on Route 104 <laughs> Say you'll stay 
104, Dylan Holden and Daisy A Day, new album coming. Is there any sort of timeline for for the new like the whole album to be released? You know, I'm talking to my management right now, and we're and we're really trying to 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 get this out to as many people as possible. And and there, there's a lot of preparation that comes with that. Oh. You know, with music in the past, I've always just kind of said, you know what, here's my music. I'm just gonna get it out there and just kind of release it. And and it's been a lot of fun doing that. And a lot of artists do that. And I it, you know I've been studying the business for years now. And I just want to take with my management team. We want to take an approach that it can you know, try to reach as many years as possible. So we are, I head back to LA at the end of the month um, and we're going to tentative date. It, it must be sometime in August. It right, must right. be for the next, at least <laughs> the met, the next single at least. And then we're hoping for the full album at least by the end of the summer or sometime right. this fall. Well, plus social media is such a great tool to have now too. You didn't have this 20 years ago where I you know. could keep in touch with people. You could yeah. really, you could even record stuff yeah. in different places and get it there. And well, uh, it's funny because when you talk to kids today, like they always ask, you know, how, how did you start playing guitar or when did you start singing? And when I tell them I'm self-taught, it's, a, it's kind of a whole different meaning than what self-taught is to them because self-taught for me was picking up guitar and listening to my father or my cousin or whoever yeah, play. Yeah. But now it's jump on YouTube and watch hours of video. Well, I listen to my, my, my <laughs> daughter. I mean, I, she's got a guitar, got yeah. a nice little Ibanez acoustic. Oh, yeah. and, and, you know, you used to have to go out and buy the song books. You used to have to, uh, you know, listen, mm-hmm. wait till the song came on the radio so you could hear what it sounded Isn't it like. crazy? Now it's just instant. You know, you, instant. on YouTube, you've got the song there. Here's how it sounds, and then here's yep. the tab for yep. it on another site. And I know. Within an hour, you can get a basic idea yeah. of what... Yeah, and know. I will say, even though I learn by ear, like piano, drums, and guitar, all that stuff, I... I envy the people who really sit down and have music in front of them and, and get. Oh after yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> there's the, that's a whole I level call, I call of commitment. Them real, I call them real musicians. Yeah, that's the thing. That's a, <laughs> yeah, that's a level that I have not quite reached oh, yet. Man, Just the yeah. patience and the discipline and stuff. <laughs> Good God, that's true. Man. Uh, what's the best place to get you on on social media? Social media, you can just type in my name in Google, and everything will basically pop up. Uh, my website is dylanholton uh, dot com. And then uh, Facebook, I think it's under Holton Music, and then Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. It's all attached. And gosh, there's so many of them now. Snapchat and all this stuff. Oh, can't so, keep it. Instagram oh and the whole goodness. trying know. to do it on. I know you can link them in, but I feel like if someone, if I link in my Facebook fan page, which is where I keep most of my updates coming from, so check that out for sure. But um, gosh, if you link them all, then I know people who are following me on one social media site maybe don't feel like I'm giving that. Instagram, the personal touch it needs. To hire a guy just for that. <laughs> oh, know, it's true, to, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So I, st- I try to stick to just a couple, just to get the word out about what's going on and all that stuff. So, right. how long are you in town for? I'm in town just for the next couple weeks. Uh, my sister just had a baby, so that's like a big reason why I'm home. And then the other big reason is my sister's getting my other sister's getting married next week. Oh, it's good. It's all happening oh, at once, though, it's isn't all it? Yeah. And yeah. I had a good show down in Pictou County, and we had a great turnout. Just to, I, I'm, it's rare that I'm here, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm uh, till the end of the month, end of July. Where are you heading back? Where are you heading back? I head back to LA. Yeah, uh, back to LA. Yeah. What's going on there? Like uh, working on the album, getting we're, everything. together Yeah, we're there. getting everything together. Uh, we like to put together release uh, single release shows. And uh, so w- what we do with my Harris management team, we end up preparing the shows and everything, promoting them, and we get a great group of people out and uh, celebrate the release of the single. And, you know, we're planning on shooting a new music video for the new single, and then I think the idea is to drop a new video even for the when the whole album comes out. So right. we have a lot planned, man. And, and I'll do a few shows out there, and there's a couple shows with some different artists that are in the making, so it's just a matter if they come. And that's out. a different ball game out there, isn't it? Like it really the Los is, Angeles, man. that's like the hub. Like worldwide, that's yeah. the hub. Well, you know, it? it's yeah. a showcase city, man. So yeah. the thing is, when you're in L.A., and I hear, I've never been to Nashville, but I hear about the same thing in Nashville. I mean, there's music on every corner, and everyone's just playing, not for money, not for anything else, but yeah, just, just in the air. Because they love to do it, man. Yeah. And it's, re- it's great to network with people, get to meet people, and just and share your music with like-minded artists, man. Like nothing beats it, you know? Yeah, it's pretty exciting, too. It's pretty, it really uh, is. Yep. Yep, it's a lot of fun, and the weather out there is just insane. It's insane, man. It's it's just pretty much... Well, we have, honestly, since I've been home this summer in, in Nova Scotia, we've had beautiful weather. But uh, it's, it's always like this. It's yeah. always it's like always. this. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> but, you know, you do kind of miss the seasons changing. Oh, yeah. You know they, change. I mean? they, <laughs> they change. They certainly change. Yeah. That's that's never uh, certain things you can count on. Yeah, it's well, true. Thanks for coming in. This was really fun. Yeah, yeah. no problem, man. What I else should we play? It. We did the, uh, the acoustic version of, uh, of Way to the World. We did Daisy a Day. Now... Uh, 
uh, Welcome to the Real World. That's a bit of an older kind of yeah, thing. Well, is there anything off that we could play? Maybe. Um, that, uh, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, there's really, a song. A there. Yeah, let me check this out. There's a. See, this is the one that I've been uh, touring on the cruise ships with, and all through the East Coast, like North Carolina, Florida, and all that stuff. And and my band down there, we got really busy really fast, so it was a lot of fun. Um, and I, I'd say play "Girl from Wilmington." "Girl from Wilmington" is uh, that's where I was living down in North Carolina, and it's basically it's it's kind of about you know being there, but you know sometimes things just can't work out the way we want them to, and you know it's. It's about a girl, so. <laughs> From Wilmington. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> right. Dylan, thanks for coming in, man. Man, really thank cool. you so much, Tom. I appreciate you guys in Q104, man. Thank you guys so much. It no means problem. a lot. Oh, before you go, uh, you just wrote a song for, for a play that's going to be coming up. Yeah, ex- yeah, man. There's a play coming through Nova Scotia. I know it's in Anaganish and picked out at the Cost Center and a couple different places. It's called The Year of the Burning. And uh, the idea behind this play is to remember all the Scottish settlers that came over from Scotland back in the late 18th century. So basically, I wrote a song called The Croft of Margaret McKay, and uh, it highlights just what happened over there with the Highland Clearances when everybody was forced out of their homes to basically end up migrating to Nova Scotia. Mm. So it tells like a, a great story, and it's, it's nice to be able to start songwriting as well for other people and for plays, and, and that's something I'm really looking out to do as well. Yeah, so. that's another tool to put in your belt You know there, what? Isn't for it? years, yeah. man, I've been writing for myself, and it's been a blast. It's been a fun, and I'm always going to do that. But uh, I know there's artists out there looking for music, and I write, I write so many country songs and folk songs and different genres, so it's something that I definitely want to get into the hands of other people. Sure. So, you know, and it opens up a whole new ballgame. It's just it's a lot of fun just to co-write and do different things with different artists so it's been a blast yeah dylan holton on route 104 Girl 
girl from Wilmington Her eyes were Girl from Wilmington